The US Air Force is rapidly soaring toward a future where human pilots will control a gang of flying drones. The program is called Collaborative Combat Aircraft, or CCA, and it is going to reshape how America fights in the air. Right now, the biggest players in defense are racing to build the winning drone. Lockheed Martin, Boeing, General Atomics, Northrop Grumman, and Andrel, each with different designs, different strategies, and different interpretations of what the Air Force wants. Some of the competitors look like mini stealth bombers. Others are optimized for speed, sensors, or swarming tactics. And while some prototypes are flying now, a lot about their capabilities is still a mystery. You're watching Task and Purpose. Thank you for being here. I'm Kyle, and today we're breaking down what the Air Force specifically is actually asking for, who the front runners are, how we even got here, and what this all means for the future of air power. But first, let's talk about Odoo, because running a business is hard enough. You shouldn't need five different platforms just to keep things moving. Odoo brings it all into one place. Your website, your inventory, your sales tools, all fully integrated and connected. Need a website? Pick a theme, drag and drop what you need, and you're up and running like that. Odoo's built-in AI even helps write your product descriptions and summaries so you don't waste your time sitting there staring at a blank screen. Behind the scenes, inventory is just as simple. You can see what's in stock, what's shipping, and what's delayed all from one dashboard. Automate vendor reminders, pay receipts, and set delivery schedules with just a few clicks. It even syncs automatically with your e-commerce and sales apps. With Odoo, everything works together so you can spend less time managing tools and more time growing your business. Start today at odoo.com. That's O-D-O-O.com. Your first app is free, and we would like to thank Odoo for sponsoring this episode. The Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program is part of a broader initiative called NGAD, or Next Generation Air Dominance. While the Navy and Marine Corps have their own CCA programs to address the unique operational needs that they have, the Air Force is going to be the one that kind of controls the entire direction of this. The Navy has been following the Air Force closely on this program, and they do envision sharing interchangeable drones with their fellow flyers because, after all, the Navy is the second largest air force in the world. Now, NGAD is a lot more than just another stealth fighter. It's a whole family of systems, including manned jets, drones, sensors, long range weapons, all working together as a coordinated system of systems. We aren't just building new, eye-wateringly expensive platforms, we are rewriting the manuals on how air power will be used in future conflicts. CCA drones are a major piece of that future. The Air Force wants uncrewed aircraft that can fly alongside or ahead of manned jets like the F-35 or the future F-47 from Boeing, and they want them to perform the dangerous jobs like air-to-air -air combat, electronic warfare, intelligence gathering, and even autonomous strike missions. These could also be teamed up with cargo aircraft, early warning and detection aircraft like the AWACS, uh, you can do them with refueling tankers, any other support that usually you have to send a fighter escort for, you could theoretically send these CCA drones to help ensure that those crews have a little bit of protection to go ahead with them. The Air Force also wants some of these to be throwaways or attritable. While they won't be like bubblegum wrapper levels of cheap, the idea is that they'll be cheap enough that if and when, because it's just a matter of when, one of these is shot down, it's not a catastrophic loss. It's not quite disposable like a loitering munition, but losing a dozen of these CCA drones will still be better than losing one human pilot. The goal with these is to mass enough air power to overwhelm defenses without upping the risk for pilots or bankrupting the Pentagon. The Air Force has said that it wants over a thousand of these drones to support about 300 manned fighters. That means each aircraft may have two or even three robotic wingmen and they could possibly be sent ahead with more, and they'll also need to be flexible, capable of flying autonomously, carrying swappable payloads, and plugging into a secure command network. It's a pretty tall order and the race to delivery has already begun.
Before CCA became a full program of record, a few early efforts helped pave the way, and one of the most important ones came from a company that wasn't even a traditional defense prime, Kratos Defense. Kratos developed the XQ-58 Valkyrie, an experimental jet that first flew back in 2019 as part of an Air Force program that is commonly called Loyal Wingman. It wasn't fully stealthy, but it was fast, semi-autonomous, and critically, it did not need a runway because it could be launched off one of those like slingshot launchers. The whole point was to show that you could field a low cost, relatively low cost, high performance drone that could accompany manned aircraft into battle. That experiment directly influenced what would become the CCA concept. Kratos proved even back then that a smaller firm could move fast, iterate quickly, and build something that didn't rely on billion dollar budgets or long procurement cycles. And while Kratos is not leading the race today, the Valkyrie design has not disappeared. It just has a new name and a new owner, and we'll talk about it a little bit later. All right, so this is who's in the mix, and we're gonna start with Lockheed Martin. Their new drone is called Vectus, and it was just unveiled by Skunk Works in September of 2025. Early renders show a sleek, tailless design with blended wings, internal weapons bays, and all the hallmarks of stealth. Lockheed says that the focus is on survivability, autonomy, and sensor fusion, especially in those unfriendly places. Leaders expect Vectis to fly along not only the F-35s, but also the upcoming NGAD F-47 fighter. Skunk Works is not exactly known for low-cost manufacturing, so it's pretty likely that Vectis will end up being a highly capable but incredibly expensive drone, not necessarily the kind that you send on one-way trips. Next up is General Atomics, the company behind the groundbreaking MQ-9 Reaper, and they're leaning on that expertise to build an entire family of CCA drones under their Gambit program, with each one meant for a different role. Right now, they have Gambit broken down into four different variants, but they're all built off of the same chassis. In an interview with TWZ at the recent AFA conference, General Atomics compared this approach to what the auto industry does. For those of you who may be into cars, you probably already know that things like the F-150 frame is also the Ford Expedition frame, and that's pretty common across the OEMs where they'll use a chassis over multiple different body styles because that saves a ton of money. The Pentagon tries this. That was kind of the approach with the F-35. They're trying to make, uh, like now they just announced they want to make a common cargo aircraft so that they don't have to have C5, 17s, C-130s they'll probably keep because those are pretty useful. But Pentagon has been moving towards this where they take a common chassis and just iterate on top of it so that they don't have to make 15 different vehicles to do 15 different jobs. They can make one vehicle, slap a bunch of stuff on it, and call it a day. The Gambit 1 is focused on intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, or ISR. Gambit 2 is air-to-air, -air, 3 is a trainer, and 4 looks a lot like a B-21 Raider, just shrunk down really small. Out front in their CCA efforts, though, is the YFQ-42A. General Atomics was awarded a contract to build the prototype back in April of 2024, and it recently conducted its first test flight just about 16 months after the contract was awarded. This was thanks in large part to its earlier XQ-67A drone, which was developed under the Air Force Offboard Sensing Station program, and it first flew in February of 2024. The company has been tight-lipped about how far along the prototypes are, but they've emphasized that this is a clean sheet design, not an evolution of the Reaper, and it's pretty clear when you look at the renders and see the plan forms. In direct competition with the YFQ-42A is the YFQ-44A, and this is the other drone that also got a prototype contract alongside the 42A. This one might be familiar to some of you because it's basically the XQ-58 Valkyrie that broke ground by flying high above it in 2019. Andrew acquired the design and rebranded it as the YFQ-44A Fury. They didn't just slap a new logo on it, they actually spent a lot of time overhauling the software, adding their AI backbone, and they integrated it with their Lattice OS platform. Officials expect this one to fly about mid-October, but you could potentially see it sooner. This video will come out in October, so who knows, maybe by the time you're watching this, this one is taken to the skies as well. 
Andrew's whole pitch in this competition and in lots of other competitions that they enter is speed, but it's not the drone speed that they're concerned with. They're aiming to build drones faster, cheaper, and with more flexible autonomy than anyone else. This could let the Air Force buy large numbers of these drones quickly and affordably, especially if they're meant to be used in swarms or in high-risk missions where losses are expected. Then there's Boeing, which is offering the MQ-28 Ghost Bat. The Ghost Bat, which is a great name by the way, is a drone originally developed with the Royal Australian Air Force and is the only drone in this competition that has actually flown operational test missions with a partner nation. It features a modular nose cone that can be swapped out depending on the mission. You can stick in sensors, EW gear, targeting systems, whatever else you can really think of, without having to redesign the whole aircraft. Boeing also says that it is semi-autonomous and already mature enough for international export, which is a huge selling point. Where Ghost Bat may struggle and not be as competitive because it's a little bit of an older design is in the survivability department. It's stealthy, but not quite as much as some of the other entrants, and its autonomy package may not be what the Air Force is expecting for some of the roles that they're looking at. Still, the fact that it's already flying and is exportable is again a pretty huge advantage. And finally, we have Northrop Grumman, which has been the quietest competitor in the field. Images of their prototype, dubbed the Model 437, popped up in 2024, showing, surprisingly, a cockpit meant for a human pilot. TWZ's Tyler Rogaway speculated at the time that a cockpit could help Northrop get ahead in the competition. Having a human pilot opens up more airspace to test it, since unmanned aircraft are still restricted in where and how they can fly. With a meat sack in the driver's seat, they can get more flight time and a better idea of what the aircraft can actually do. This doesn't necessarily mean that Northrop intends on putting a pilot in this aircraft permanently. They could be doing a manned, unmanned thing where the Air Force or whoever buys it could choose to put a human in the pilot seat or they could choose to just send it off without one. That would be a pretty incredible flexibility and might be a huge selling point in and of itself, not just with what a human in the pilot seat does right now for it and getting it flight hours and all that other stuff. Making manned, unmanned, optional aircraft is not necessarily a new thing because right now the Air Force is currently converting several F-16s into unmanned platforms. They're doing this as part of the Viper Experimentation and Next Gen Operations Model, which is an autonomy flying testbed program also known as Venom. With advances in software, we're getting to the point where many manned platforms could be converted to unmanned relatively easily and cheaply, which would help create thousands of loyal wingmen that we already have built and know how to use. Right now though, where we are with the CCA program is what we call increment one, but we're getting close to increment two. As reported by Breaking Defense, the Air Force said at AFA that it aims to issue a concept refinement award in early 2026 with several designs on the contract, and this is where we will begin increment two. If the CCA program succeeds, and I genuinely believe that it will, it will fundamentally change how the U.S. fights wars in the air. Imagine a sorties of F-35s or even F-47s going into enemy airspace, but instead of going in alone, each one is escorted by multiple drones. One is jamming enemy radars and soaking up signals, another may be scouting ahead looking for targets, a third could be carrying air-to-air -air missiles, and a fourth could be carrying air-to-ground missiles to deal with anti-air batteries and other threats on the ground. And then you have the human pilot slash puppet master controlling it all, or at least keeping an eye on what the software is doing. These drones are being designed to communicate not just with each other, but with their human pilot. They can also be launched from forward bases, even without full logistics support. And if one gets shot down, it's a loss, but it's not really a tragedy because there's nobody inside of it. And at the end of the day, it's just a bunch of metal and plastic and wires and stuff. When one of these gets shot down, we don't need to send Marines out on a trap mission, and that's a tactical recovery of aircraft and personnel, or Air Force PJs to conduct a rescue. 
but of course, it's not without its own challenges. Autonomy is still a pretty big trust issue. How do you give drones lethal authority without losing human control? How do you prevent blue on blue incidents? And how do you make sure the software behaves the way that you want it to when the enemy is trying to actively jam, spoof, or mislead it? There's also a question around procurement. The Air Force says that it wants to field operational CCAs by 2028. That's fast. And fast is not necessarily a word that people associate with defense acquisition, especially a program as complex as this one and involving so many different manufacturers. So that's the state of play in the race to build America's next generation of air power. Lockheed seems to be leaning on stealth while General Atomics is going modular, Boeing is already flying, and Andrel is moving fast and cheap. And then you have Northrop lurking in the shadows with probably the most mysterious of them all. Now we just have a question of which one will actually win, but in this case it could be all of them, it could be none of them. The only thing that we can say with actual certainty today is that the future of air combat will look a lot different. It won't resemble so much Top Gun, and it might even start to look more like the 2005 classic film Stealth starring Jamie Foxx and Jessica Biel. Hopefully though, it does not look like Stealth because that movie is a seriously tough watch. As always, let us know what you think in the comments. Is this a huge mistake? Is the Air Force just a bunch of idiots spending a bunch of money that they'll never get anything for? Should we be doing only these types of aircraft and no more manned aircraft? Whatever you got, let us know. Jump into the comments, start fighting with people. If you fight with people, don't stop. Just know that you are this close to getting them to change their minds. Don't give up. I wrote this script and Savvy edited the video, and today I have on uh, my Lego, my GWAT Lego guy shirt from Platoon Daddy. You can buy one of these at pltdaddy.com. It's owned by a, a soldier. Pretty sure uh, he just got out recently. He's got a lot of good stuff on there. Go ahead, support him if you want. If you want to support us, you can go to store.taskandpurpose.com. We have a lot of t-shirt designs. I'm starting to throw more, more merch up there, getting some different things going, mugs, mouse pads, stuff like that. Uh, you can use code actually wash to get 10% off. If you guys have an idea for merch that you would like, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Real quick, I want to talk about where I was this last week. Uh, I went down to Atlanta for the Mick event. It's uh, It started about nine years ago as the Military Influencer Conference. I hate the word influencer. I hate even saying it. It makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. But this was before influencer was kind of a dirty word. Anyways, I didn't know what to expect. I've never been to a thing like this. I've never done anything like this. I wore a tux for the first time at this. That was kind of weird. Um, I'm not really the kind of go out and shake a bunch of hands type of guy. I'm not really all that social. If you see me though, like out in the streets or whatever, come up and say, hey, I'm not like an unfriendly person. I just don't do well with a lot of people and crowds or the whole self-promotion thing. Um, I'm just not good at it, but I had a really great time. I met a lot of really cool people that I'm hoping that uh, we can work with in the future for the channel and get some really cool stuff created for you guys. Uh, because that's really my whole focus is just making something good for you, the audience, and I know that sounds obvious, but a lot of people can forget that as they get going. So anyways, that's where I was. It was a good time. Uh, it's coming back in next September. It's gonna be in Tampa. So it, I should be going there unless they fire me. Uh, but if you're in the area and you wanna check it out, start looking into it now. All right, now I'm gonna shut up. I'm Kyle, your friendly ginger producer man. You are all dismissed and I will see you next time.